Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to video one of the level two drainage waste and venting sizing series. In today's video, we're gonna cover sizing the building sewer and building drain using code tables. All code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. In order for you to understand what's going on in this video series, you're gonna to need to know the basics of drainage waste and venting. If you do not, I do have a six video series called Basic DWV. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll find all those videos there. So this is our example. And there's a couple things I should clarify here. On the main floor there, we have two bathroom groups with a flush tank water closet. Also on the upstairs, on the far right, we have a double compartment kitchen sink. If we drop down into the basement, we will see a clothes washer or a laundry standpipe is what we call it. And kind of hidden in the middle there in the floor is our floor drain. Now this is a regular floor drain and not an emergency floor drain. Difference there, regular floor drain, you count fixed units. Emergency floor drain, you don't need to, but this is a regular one. Now the code table to size a building sewer and a building drain comes on table 2410.6c. It looks like this. Now we have a number of different aspects to this table, so let's just break it down. On the left hand side, we have the size of drain or sewer in inches. Now there's two different important things in the middle of that table. The first one is the slope. And if you look on the right hand side, we have one in 25 and we go all the way up to one in 400 on the left hand side. We have a couple different talking points there. The slope one in 25, we're allowed to use it, but it's kind of steep, so we rarely use it. One in 50 is about quarter inch per foot. And that's what we use for pipes three inch and less. But if we move over to 1 and 100, we're going to notice a line across on the 3 inch pipe. That means if you have a 3 inch pipe, you are not allowed to use the grade 1 and 100. So the basic rule there, if you're looking at a pipe size on this table and you go down on any slope and there's a line, that means you're not allowed to use it. And if all this talk about pipe grades and slopes has you a little bit confused, I have a video on that in my basic DWV series. All the rest of the numbers that we find in the middle of this table are called hydraulic load, and that is measured in fixture units. Fixture units is a number that is used for designing drainage, and we will find all those in table 2493 for every associated fixture. Now, I've already described table 2493 in detail in the basic DWV video series that I've done, so I'm going to just be referencing it, and the assumption is that you know how to use it already. Now let's head over to table 2493 to look up bathroom group with flush tank water closet. If we go over to the right, we'll find out that is six fixture units. Now don't confuse this with a bathroom group with direct flush valve. That's a more commercial setup and it's a different amount of fixture units. Now what this does tell me is each of these bathroom groups will be worth six fixture units each. Note, if you go through table 2493 and add up all these fixtures individually, it will be 6.5 fixture units per bathroom. Just for further clarity, a bathroom group is a lav sink, a water closet, and a bathtub or shower in one room. If you were in my class, I will tell you whether or not a bathroom will be classed as a bathroom group or whether or not you need to add up the fixtures individually because it does change your fixture unit answers. Why don't we start by sizing the building drain? The building drain starts here at the base of the main stack and goes out all the way until we get to the building sewer, which occurs one meter outside of the building. We need to add up all the fixture units that will be draining through the building drain, which in this case is fairly easy because it's everything that drains through the house. In 2493, let's look up that kitchen sink. Now this is kind of that weird one that's under sink. And this one has two compartments. We're gonna come across here. We're gonna find out, hey, a kitchen sink with two compartments is one and a half fixture units. If we look downstairs, we see that clothes washer. So let's go in table 2493 under clothes washer, domestic. That will be two fixture units with a two inch trap. And now the last fixture that will be draining into that building drain will be that three inch floor drain down in the basement. If we look up floor drain on 2493, we're gonna find out that it is three fixture units with a three inch trap. And now we've completed all the fixed unit loads and I'm gonna leave that right on the picture so we have a visual reference of where it's coming from. Now, because all these fixtures will be draining through the building drain, we need to add up all those fixed unit loads so we can compare that to the chart. So I had two bathroom groups that were six each, add those up, that equals 12. I've got a double compartment kitchen sink, that was one and a half. 
add that up, we're now at 13.5. I've got a clothes washer at 2, we're at 15.5. And finally, I need to add on three more for the floor drain down in the basement. I am now at 18.5 fixture units total. Now finally, I get to reference table 2416C. Now, in order to do this, I need to know the slope of my pipe. I'm going to say this pipe is graded at 1 in 50. So if I go across on a 3 inch pipe, I will notice that I can drain 27 fixture units at 1 in 50. Therefore, this building drain can be 3 inches, no problem. Now before I go and say that 3 inches is my final answer, I need to check one special code clause, 2492 part 2. That says if I have a building drain or branch downstream of three or more water closets, it needs to be minimum four inches in size. But I only have two water closets, so three inch is good. That is my final answer for that one. And now we get to go size up the building sewer. Now the building sewer is going to have the exact same amount of fixed units as the building drain because it's just one pipe flowing into the next. So that will be 18.5 fixture units. And we will also be using table 2410C to size the building sewer. When in doubt about these tables, read the title. It'll tell you what it's for. Now before we get into that table though, we need to reference a very important code clause, 2494. And what it tells me is the minimum size of building sewer downstream of the main cleanout needs to be 4 inches in size. So that's going to be our starting point. So because my starting point is 4 inch, I'm going to say I want to grade this building sewer at 1 in 100. So if I go to table 24106C and go down on slope 1 and 100, I can do 180 fixture units on 4 inch. Now that's a lot. That's enough for many commercial buildings out there. And so the building sewer for our example will be 4 inches in size. And a 4 inch building sewer is actually very, very common in the field. It would take quite a huge building to need something bigger than that. And that brings us to the end of this video. But stay tuned for the next video where we talk about branch drains, individual vents, and dual vents. And until that point, you have yourself a superlative day.